Welcome to Rich Planet TV. I'm Richard D. Hall. Just to firstly remind you that this current series of Rich Planet TV is a 12 show series, and this is show number six. After today's show, there will be six more fortnightly shows, which takes us to the 4th of November 2016. After this, I will be planning a UK tour commencing probably in March or April next year. I hope to release one or two films on the 2017 tour. You may also be aware that I recently released a film on DVD which I said I could not say what it was about. I can assure you this was not some kind of marketing ploy. It was done because I did not want it to be known that I was researching this issue before a significant number of people had watched the film. This was because I received what I consider to be a death threat as a direct result of researching the film. Thank you to everyone who has bought the DVD on film. I very much appreciate your support. The feedback I have had is very positive. So I can now announce that the film is entitled Didcot Deception, Jed Allen Not Guilty and covers my independent investigation into the 2015 Didcot murders. You may remember just over a year ago our brainless mainstream media referring to these murders as the Wolverine murders. The supposed perpetrator, 21-year-old Jed Allen, without any motive whatsoever, is said to have used a hunting knife to murder his own mother, who people said he cared about very much, murder his six-year-old sister, who he adored, and murdered his stepfather, then conveniently committed suicide just two hours later. But after my detailed investigation into this case, I now believe he did not murder anyone, and I also believe he was murdered in a cleverly orchestrated plot in which some crime scene evidence was planted by the real perpetrators in an attempt to pin the blame on him. My investigation is now complete, and there is only so far I can go without judicial authority. So details of my investigation have been sent to relevant authorities. Now you might be slightly puzzled as to why I decided to investigate what seems like a domestic incident and is not in the same category as, let's say, a false flag operation. Well, the term false flag operation does not really encompass much of what is going on today. What is happening is based on pure deception, but the motives for using deception uh, in killings, or indeed in fake killings, can vary. Instead of the term false flag operation, I would call them intelligence-led, media-assisted deception executions, or an ill-made operation. Once viewers have seen and digested the Didcot film, assuming my hypothesis is correct, they can then compare this incident with other incidents where deception plays a key role and where the media are used to sensationalise a totally false narrative about what occurred. So although the Didcot murders were in a domestic setting, I believe it can be demonstrated that they were fundamentally linked to other national or even international terror type events. This is because the modus operandi suggests the group that planned and perpetrated the Didcot murders may be the same personnel who are behind the fabricated terror events being reported in our media at the moment. This may seem like a far stretch for some, but this is all explained at the end of the Didcot Deception film. On today's show I speak to a whistleblower who has a great knowledge about microwaves and about what effect microwaves have on human beings. Today's guest in the 1960s trained at the UK government microwave warfare establishment. He worked with the underwater bomb disposal unit which used microwaves within its unit. In the 1970s one of his tasks over an 11 year period was to debrief spies involved in microwave warfare. Welcome, Barry Trower. Hello, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, then, Barry. Um, can you first just give us a brief summary of your early life in terms of your education and, and your work? I studied microwaves from 1959 to pass my entrance exam into the Royal Navy. I worked on radar and with radar and all aspects of microwave warfare. Mm -hmm. 
uh, like all divers, I was involved in underwater demolition, which is what all divers do. And microwaves were involved with booby trapping mines. <coughs> so uh, again, I studied microwaves. When I left the Royal Navy, I was invited to teach in one of the top security establishments, and I, I won't go into that too far, uh, but where I was teaching uh, were captured spies, and in the 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, microwaves were developing as the new Cold War atomic bomb, as they are today, mm -hmm. uh, with the big harp and the big transmitting stations around the world. Microwaves are now the new atomic bomb. Right. But they were being developed in those days, and any information that could be gleaned from captured spies or anybody of interest, uh, I would filter out. It was under a scheme laid down by Sir William Melvin. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was his brainchild, and I supplied the information to MI5, MI6. So th these <coughs> the spies then uh, were, were captured. Yes, yeah, so, so they would have knowledge of certain microwave technologies. Is that yes? Um, they would have knowledge. Not all of them. Some of them would have knowledge of, of the technologies. When I left that job, I went into teaching full time. I taught, as I still do occasionally, advanced physics, some mathematics. Uh, I have uh, my first degree is uh, physics. I specialized in nuclear and atomic physics, and I specialized with my dissertation into writing about absorption of the far end of the microwave spectrum. My second degree is a research degree where I specialized in environmental influences on thinking processes. So, so what year were the, the two degrees, Barry? Uh, I can't think of it at the moment. I'm going, we're, we're talking 80s, right. 90s. So, so when you were working providing information to say MI5 and MI6, yeah. uh, uh, at what point did you stop, let's say, having access to maybe... Can I, sorry, can I just finish my qualifications yeah, sure. before yeah, I forget? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, I also have a teaching diploma in human physiology, right, uh, and I'm the author of the Tetra report for the Police Federation of England and Wales, and the higher confidential report for a different police union, and I lecture all over the world now on the dangers of microwave radiation. Right. Sorry, so we'll go back. Yeah. So, so just <coughs> let me differentiate then, okay. because a lot of a lot of the papers that you cite are in the public domain. Yes. Yeah. And how much of, of what you learned is not in the public domain? Like perhaps your earlier work when you were doing debriefing in that kind oh, of thing? Oh, quite a bit. And, and is, is, there, is there much that you can reveal that's, that's currently secret that, that, that's not in the public domain? I mean, is... Oh, th there is some, because I've seen it published or mentioned elsewhere. Right. Um, what I cannot reveal are names, dates and places. Right. Uh, because the scheme that I was working under for Sir William Melvin, um, or for his, it was his brainchild, that may still be being used today. Uh, it, it tends to be used in times of war or terrorism. Mm -hmm. So it may be used to, and I could be uh, putting people's lives at risk. Right. So uh, I, I wouldn't go too far into that, but any other questions I could probably answer. Right. Now, you mentioned there the 2001 report that you wrote um, essentially uh, f for the benefit of the police <coughs> who were f considering taking on the Tetra technology to yep. use in their communication systems. So I've had a look at that report. Uh, now, it's quite a good report for people to maybe get a, a good overview of the effects of microwaves uh, uh, you know, on people. 
because um, you, you, you cite other papers within within that report, Barry. Can you just mm -hmm. give us a quick overview of that report and some of the other papers that you mentioned in there? The 2001 report, I was commissioned, this is very interesting, I was commissioned by the, I congratulate you on your questions actually, they're, they're very good. Um, I was commissioned by the Police Federation. I, I was picked up here by three Federation officers, <clears throat> two of them chiefs of areas, whole areas, counties, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I was driven to London. I met all of the Federation officers. I laid out the information that, I, that was dangerous about Tetra and the fact that it was a government epidemiological study, or to put it more simply, an experiment mm -hmm. on police officers to see how many cancers and other illnesses would develop mm -hmm. from using this technology. Right. Uh, can I just finish this? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> then they suggested that I write the report and document everything and lay it all out, which <clears throat> I said I would. I came back, uh, and this is actually important, I was invited to the top security office with a police secretary. She did all the typing, she did all the computer work, I don't use computers, and then I walked out with nothing, uh, and then uh, the leader of the police federation, there were two ladies, one up in the Midlands and one here, who were, let me say, friendly with Tetra Airwave. Uh, one, I believe, left and became an executive. The other also left, and I, I don't know whether she became an executive, but <clears throat> her opening words at the conference were to all of the police officers, nothing is going to stop Tetra. Right. That was the police the Fed. And they denied that I was commissioned to write the report. They denied that I ever went to London and wrote the report. And one of the police officers who had access to the report, when he heard that the boss was now working with Tetra and my report was going to be just totally scrapped, mm -hmm. he released it. Right, I he, see. He released it out um, and, and that, that was the first report. Right, well if people want to have a look at it, you can uh, download it from the link on the screen. And just to point out, uh, Barry, uh, uh, the police use a different communication system to the general public, i.e. the public will use mobile phones, but the police are currently using this Tetra system. Can you tell us, before the police used Tetra, what was their system? Yeah. Well, they had the old um, harmless, in terms of injury, um, analog waves. In other words, uh, like the old radio, radio, uh, the home service, the light program, the, the long wave yeah. analog service. Uh, like, like CB radio. <clears throat> yeah, uh, and, and the, the, it was, which was perfectly well. All they needed to do was put up uh, a few more big aerials uh, and issue a few more handsets. Yeah. But a document came out uh, which I received uh, from uh, a person who works in the classified area of documents. Uh, I received a document <coughs> which said that at the time the the Tetra system is, is the, the, the gubbins inside is Motorola, which is American. Mm -hmm. And the American president, in this document, the American president told, didn't ask, told our president that whatever happens, get Tetra out. And the reason for this was because we would then be used, the British police have one hell of a reputation, good reputation, all over the world. And we were then used 
as uh, an advertisement for all of Europe and other countries. When you say get Tetra out, you mean adopt it? Adopt it. Yeah. So we encouraged re the rest of the world to adopt Tetra and this document said, which I published in my report, that once it was out, the Americans have the ability to then listen in. Right. And Tetra isn't just used by the police, it's used by the secret services, the government agencies, mm -hmm. everybody using secret communications. Mm -hmm. So the Americans automatically had the ability to listen in to 30 or so countries, secret services and police and everything else. Right. All right. Well, I've got a few more questions on Tetra, which I'll come back to, buddy. OK. But um, I've heard you in previous interviews refer to hundreds if, or if not thousands of papers and books that, that you've come across in your time. Can oh, you, yeah. And am I right in thinking that it was actually your job to, to study some of these papers? Absolutely. And I still do. So, so let me ask you then, what was... Why, why were you tasked to, to do all that research? Or, or was it your own research that you were, uh, you know, was it your job to, to find out all of the effects of microwaves or was it just your own? I, I congratulate you again on your brilliant questions. No, um, in, in fact, I, I don't want to be associated with microwaves and this. Um, and it's not what I, I really like researching. I, I am, I'm actually, uh, at university, uh, I studied physics and philosophy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I love researching philosophy. Uh, but I, <laughs> I'm, I'm, how many people, I, I, I don't consider myself an expert. It's not a word I use. And I'm not the only one with my knowledge. But how many people do you know are willing to speak about the Cold War microwave warfare, have degrees in nuclear and atomic physics, specialized in microwaves, lecture in advanced physics, have been involved since 1959, uh, and have read virtually all of the papers and had access to the secret papers that are willing to sit in front of you and say, look, let's get the truth out there to the people because nobody else will do it. Um, I'm a whistleblower, uh, like any other whistleblower, uh, and I seem to be the only one in this country, and that's where we are. So in, in your role, when you worked, let's say, in, for the government, mm. were they tasking you to look at those papers, or was that something you were doing yourself? Well, they, they ought to, it was my job. Right. Um, if you're in studying microwaves, every single... The one thing the military are good for... Uh, is knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a question, it will be answered. Uh, the military are very good at answering questions and allowing you to study. Right. Uh, and I have one of these brains. Um, when you go, uh, and I, I carry on, I study, even now, um, at my age, I study five to six hours in an evening. It's what I do. Yeah. I, I learn five to six. It, it's addictive. Like some people are addicted to heroin or whatever, alcohol. I am addicted to uh, learning new research and studying and writing maths and thinking. Um, and I will be doing it for five hours tonight. On, so I, I've studied all the new papers as they've come out. Um, and I do every single night. And if somebody wanted to study a body of those papers. Is there an internet resource somewhere that people can go to or would they just use Google or where would they find these papers on microwaves? Um, two people, if not three, uh, in my travels around the world <coughs> have said, you know, thank you for your lecture uh, and I, I know they're on the internet mm. uh, but I've never ever used a computer, I've never looked into right, one. Right. Um, but two or three professors or government officials have said, look, if, if we want to change the law or we want to help our people or we want to do this, we will need donk, 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 donk. Yeah. Do you have the papers? Um, yeah. And I have said, yes, they are now released under the Freedom of Information. 
if you know where to go and what to look for, they are available. Yeah. Um, I will stay on an extra day or two in this country. Would you like to download them, scan them, put them on disk? Because at conferences and in legal cases, you need the front page of the document and the relevant page because they're six, seven hundred pages long. Right. Um, so they download these and they are all on disk. And if somebody says, can I have the documents? I will say, yes, they are on disk. Do you have a computer with you? Download them. Right. I Simple see. as that. All right, but there are there are several papers mentioned in your 2001 paper yep. for the police. They're and, all and, on disk. And, and, and they're probably on the internet, I would imagine. They're all on disk yeah. anyway. Right, okay. Uh, and the disk is available. I mean, you can download them right. if you want to. Right. I've got the disks here. Right, okay. Well, maybe um, we can uh, look into that and maybe put them on a server where yeah. someone can get them. <laughs> All right. Um, so are you doing consultancy work at the moment, uh, Barry, where you're, you're asked to be, say, an expert witness or this kind of thing? Or what's uh, yes, I, uh, I'm very strict. Um, I will act as a consultant. I have always worked free of charge since since I started uh, I have never ever charged a penny and I do not accept gifts I refuse all gifts I refuse all money and I will be a consultant if I'm not described as an expert right I, I don't like the term expert because it implies that you know everything um, and I don't know everything Right. I'm not an electrical engineer, I'm not a medical doctor, um, and it, it, I often come across questions, I say I, I, I don't have mm. the knowledge. So I, I do not like expert, but yes, I am a consultant. I, I tend to visit about six countries a year um, to, do, to lecture to, it's usually medical institutions, universities, royal families, governments. Right. I tend to now stick to those. Uh, now, you mentioned uh, to me before the interview that you'd spoke at the Welsh Assembly, uh, yes. the Welsh Government. Just, can um, you just uh, well, tell us what happened there? Yeah, um, I was invited to speak at the Welsh Assembly building. I spoke to a room full of people. Now, I don't know who they were because I, I, I don't know mm -hmm. the, the Welsh Government. Um, and I, I, I do know that my lecture is on the internet mm -hmm. uh, and I do know the feedback I had afterwards was that the Welsh Assembly people made recommendations to Westminster that they wanted to reduce the power do this do that to reduce the illness particularly with children and pregnant women and the elderly and the sick Mm -hmm. And the feedback I got was that they, they were told by Westminster that they did not have the power to introduce these changes and Westminster, Westminster mm. would not sanction them um, and the whole thing was really a waste of time. Right. Uh, now, we'll, we'll come back on to Tetra in a moment, but I okay. just want to, just for people's general sort of knowledge about uh, the electromagnetic spectrum. <coughs> yep. Um, we've got. I've got a little diagram there, um, which which is the, the basic uh, frequency starting at very low frequencies, uh, going up to um, what you might call ionising radiation frequencies. Just just tell us, Barry, um, what ionising radiation is. Right. Ionising radiation. Do you want me to point this up? Yes. Here? Yeah. Ionizing radiation are the, from going down here, the ultraviolet, the X-ray, and the gamma rays. Right. Okay. So anything higher in frequency than ultra, ultraviolet and up over is known as ionizing radiation. This is ionizing radiation. Yeah. And what ionizing radiation does, it has the ability to go straight through the cells in your body, directly damage the DNA, and cause 
uh, any number of illnesses, including 200 different types of cancers. Um, and this is why X-ray machines are limited and uh, gamma rays are used to destroy cancer cells in the body. Visible light um, and coming up, infrared is heat. The millimeter and the, these, these two are actually microwaves. Yep. The millimeter are microwaves. Very short microwaves or shorter than... Well, microwaves are from a millimeter to a meter. Yeah. Those are microwaves. Those are microwaves. And then, of course, you go up into the longer waves, the television. Yeah. Which are considered more safe, but possibly have their own dangers as well. Well, no, they're not, they're not safe. A, a doctor, Debbie Ackland, wrote a brilliant paper several years ago um, where she made a list of the epidemiological studies about radio and TV transmitters right. and found th they were exactly the same uh, as the microwave transmitters. There were increased cancers, increased suicides, increased children's health problems uh, 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 around Crystal Palace and, and all these ones. So mm -hmm. it takes longer, but uh, you can, th they are not safe. Right. It, it just takes longer. Okay. Um, and of course, you've got the infrared here. The microwaves go into the infrared. Yeah. Um, infrared is really heat. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> microwaves, uh, the definition is 300 megahertz. To 300 gigahertz, yeah. which is th 300 million cycles per second, or 300,000 million cycles per second. Yeah, that, that, um, that's actually one millimeter to a meter. To a meter, yeah. And within that, you've got your tetra, which is 380 um, yeah, megahertz. Are, yeah. Mobile phones, which seem to be spread over a few different ranges. You've got the 900 megahertz band, 2100 megahertz, and 1800 megahertz. The different 3G and yep. the different networks. You've got microwave ovens which work at two four fifty megahertz. So you, you've got a, mo a mobile phone range there at two thousand one hundred megahertz, and a, and a microwave oven is only at two four fifty megahertz. Yeah, so yeah. it's not it's it's not vastly different, and we all know the effects of a microwave oven. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, decked your your decked uh, phones, which are the if you have a, a cordless phone in your house, that's nineteen hundred megahertz. Yeah. And Wi-Fi, again, is at uh, 2.4 gigahertz, a similar frequency to... To the oven. Yeah, yep. to the, to the similar to the oven. Uh, now, let's just, just look, at, look at a few of these, Barry. Let's look at Wi-Fi. 2.4 gigahertz it also uses some higher frequencies as well in certain systems. Um, is it not the case that what, with Wi-Fi, they've put a limit on the you know, milliwatts per square meter that your <coughs> wireless router can operate at? Because the, um, the router in my house, I was trying to get it to go further than it did, and it, I couldn't get the power turned up. And I found I found that there was an actual a ceiling on the on the power limit. Is is that that they've done for safety reasons? No. Um, in fact, it makes it worse. Go on. Uh, Two point four gigahertz Wi-Fi, um, and this is published, uh, uh, and, and I have the documents. Uh, both the Soviet Union. And the uh, German scientists, and in fact the Americans, they have all published that the Wi-Fi frequency is a known, proven, and accepted stealth weapon frequency used directly to cause harm. It is a known weapons frequency. Mm -hmm. So. Wi-Fi itself is a weapon. There is no getting away from that. It is an internationally recognized weapon frequency mm -hmm. and it is designed to cause harm. That's the first thing. Can I just, yeah, come, yeah, while yeah, my sure. brain is, yeah. where you have a reduced power, in fact, that is even more dangerous. It is known and published, Swartz, Provnitch, Henry Lai, Neil Cherry, four international, internationally recognized university professors. They have all published <clears throat> low frequency can be 
more dangerous and is certainly as dangerous as high frequency. Do, and the reason is... Do you mean low power output? Low power. Sorry, low power. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, uh, yeah, low power. Uh, low power is as or more dangerous <clears throat> as high power. And the reason is that if you expose yourself to high power, you have defense mechanisms in your body, which we have evolved with over since we were living in caves to protect us from electric thunderstorms. Namely, for the doctors listening to this, uh, protein 53 in the cells, nuclear core complex in the cells, if they detect an unusual electrical magnetic charge, they will rush around and start to protect and defend the cells. Okay. Protein 53, nuclear core complex. Mm. But with a low level, mm. or with pregnant women who are in the uterus, with a low level of power, these particular proteins are not activated because it is, it's below the radar, below the activation level. Mm. And with pregnant women and children, they are not yet developed in the immune system. Mm -hmm. So they don't have this protection anyway. So a low power will come in. It isn't detected by the body's immune system radar. And this is why around transmitters, everything is fine. And then after about 18 months, you start to get your suicides, your leukemias, your mm -hmm. cancers it takes about 18 months but then they start and this is why so, so <coughs> in terms of let's take household things uh, decked phones and uh, wi-fi yeah would you say there's a safe distance to stand away from your wireless router or or what would your recommendation be for, 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 would, the recommend would, no that there, there there are no safe microwave levels Microwaves are not safe. It's like saying, um, how many, and I've had this at conferences, um, <clears throat> you know, how many microwaves can I take? Mm. And there's a, a brilliant scientist, Robert Kane, actually answered this question. And it's on page 235 of his report. And it's a report of all of the other research reports um, and his answer was and he said this is a frequently asked question how long can I use my phone how long can I sit here <clears throat> and his question or, or his answer is how lucky do you feel mm. uh, and it's the same as smoking when people say well how many cigarettes can I smoke and I say well it may be one I don't know it depends yeah. on your immune system your makeup there are no safe microwaves. If you're going to have Wi-Fi in the house, you have it fed with a cable, mm -hmm. then it's safe. Mm -hmm. If you want your iPads, iPods, all these phones, mm -hmm. have them fed with a cable. Mm -hmm. Do not use a walkabout phone. Mm -hmm. They transmit even when they're back on the mm -hmm. thing. Okay, thanks for that, Barry. Now, let's just uh, come back to Tetra and just to compare it with, with mobile phones. <coughs> okay. Um, there's a website you can go on, I'll put the link on the screen, which, which uh, it's produced by Ofcom that shows you all of the transmitter masts uh, around the UK. And if, if you look at that, you see that maybe one in 15, one in 20 is a Tetra, Tetra mast, yep. so it's something like that. The majority are mobile phone masts operating at 900, yep. 2100 or 1800 megahertz. But every one in sort of 15 or so is, is a tetra mast, 380 megahertz. Now, that, that, the, the signal is slightly different in its modulation. Just, just explain how, how the tetra signals are different to well, mobile the, phone signals. The tetra signal pulses. Now, uh, and this, there, there is no short answer to this. Um, I, I give full answers and then you mm -hmm. edit them down if you want. Uh, pulses were known to be dangerous in the year 64 BC. Yeah. Uh, 
a, a, a really clever scientist called Ptolemy found that if he made a wheel, solid wheel, and drilled holes, and then spun it in front of people's eyes, in front of a, a bright source, which may be something burning or the sun, at different spins, he could induce different neurological symptoms. The most common one that people would recognize is uh, photosensitive epilepsy. When they say, when you've got flashing on the television screen. Yeah. That. Now, this is where the weapons come from. When I was debriefing spies, I made a list of some 30 to 40 different pulse frequencies that could induce 50 to 60 physiological and neurological symptoms to do with changing the heart, changing vision, changing thinking processes, what have you. And it is the pulses that are mainly used in microwave weapons for many reasons. Now, Tetra has a pulse frequency that is known to cause confusion and indecision and to make you uh, just also aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things I recognized as soon as I saw the pulse frequency and I said to the police federation, you cannot use this. It is everything you do not want your emergency services to be. And that is aggressive or indecisive. Uh, but, but they went ahead and used it. Um, and this was a part of the experiment. Uh, and it's actually documented that they are studying a neurological disorder mm. with this. Right. So, so it's 17.6 hertz, 17.6 yeah. pulses. pulses a second. Yep, that is known. Now, let's just, I'm just going to play a uh, um, sequence of square waves pulsed at 17.6 hertz, just, just to see how quickly you get annoyed with it. So what's the reason why Tetra has to be pulsed and the mobile phone ones aren't? Well, no, the mobile phones are pulsed. Oh, they are pulsed. Oh, everything is pulsed. Right. Um, you see... Uh, pulsed or modulated, yeah. they say. Well, and, and this is where the argument came in initially. Um, they, they initially pulsed them. But when people like me said, look, these pulses are dangerous, they then changed the word pulse to modulation. Right. Uh, and they said, well, a, a pulse is separate, like, like if you cut sausages up. A modulation is where the sausages are joined mm. by an infinitesimally thin thread. And they said, ah, there's a piece of energy goes there. So, n But in fact, the actual outcome is the same. Mm -hmm. um, so pulses and modulations are the same. And in fact, everything is pulsed and modulated. Um, and today, 4G, it is so complex. Uh, so with the I iPhones and iPads and all these now, smartphones, they, the waveform is so complex, they can't even tell you what they are. And if they can't tell you what they are, they cannot tell you what they will do in the body. And if they cannot tell you what they can do with the body, there are no safety certificates. So they can't give you a fix. They, they cannot give you a safety certificate. Right. And they certainly can't say this is safe for a pregnant woman, a child. So, so they, they, they can't say this is pulsed at 17.6 well, hertz. They, they like can like Tetra generally is. say what pulses are going in. Right. But the pulses interfere with each other, right. and then you get different. It, it's a yeah, bit like harmonics, it's a it? bit like if you've got six kids on a trampoline. Yeah, you know, it starts to get complicated, yeah. and mathematically, um, it, it gets immensely complicated. So, what's do you know what the reason is why they had to, why they've de decided to use um, the modulation? in the first place, 17.6 hertz. Is that to get better transmission? Well, it's to get, uh, to get better transmission, better speech. Right. Um, 
and that particular frequency um, just aided what they wanted uh, for in terms of clarity. Okay. But I mean, we told them it, it was it's a weapons frequency, and you can't use it. Uh, but so of course, this is a medical experiment. It's not due to finish until 2018. Yeah. So, so when when did they roll it out, uh, Barry uh, Tetra well, in the UK? 2001, isn't it? Right. Right. Um, and w I've got a little device here that can measure, uh, give me a, a very basic indication. It's, it's, it's called a smog meter, which mm -hmm. has a, a display on there. Do you recommend people get these, or do you, do you need a full spectrum analyzer? Um, it's it's thousands well, of pounds. Or what would you recommend if someone wants to measure? If you just want one to measure where microwaves um, are coming from, if it covers the full 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz, it, it will help to a degree. And if you want to insulate your house and uh, put up some sort of screening device, you can use one of those and it will screech where most of the microwaves are coming from and you can screen them off and put it up and they stop and you think, that's it, I've done mm -hmm. that. But if you want to know everything that is coming in, because they tend not to pick up, that the, the pulses now are naught to 600, uh, and that won't pick those up. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you want to pick up everything, you will need to hire somebody with a full spectrum analyzer, and they leave it there connected to a computer for about a week, yeah. going around like a lighthouse. Yeah. because you've got your military, your road services, your, there's about 60 different organizations, plus all the phones and everything else. Uh, so so what you, you mentioned there, you said you, you could screen it and see if, see if the signal drops. Uh, what would you use, um, like a three millimeter alum, aluminum sheet or something like that, or what, what would you mm -hmm. use as a screen? If you're going to screen, go to a professional organization like ESUK, Electrosensitivity UK. Uh, they have the professors, the medical doctors, um, and they have a directory of recognized screening materials. Mm. Don't do it yourself mm -hmm. by using tinfoil or whatever, because you can actually make things worse. You can actually box the microwaves in and make things worse um, and you you they've got to be earthed it's not a cheap process mm -hmm. but you have got to go to an expert mm. and get expert advice all right on thanks this. for that i'm going to go back to something that you said before about the fact that the the tetra system is an experiment because when somebody brings out a brand new concept or product to consumers normally they have to prove that it's safe first before it's yep. used. But with electromagnetic radiation, the opposite is true. Uh, they have assumed it is safe, and then when, when people um, complain, they then ask for proof that it's not safe. <laughs> the Brilliant. Yeah. So, Brilliant question. So, so tell, us why Brilliant conclusive, question. tell us why conclusive proof is difficult, if not impossible, for someone who's complaining about microwaves. Yeah. Well, the, can I just go back yep, to yep. the beginning of what you said? Yeah. Um, they brought out microwaves, and like like a drug trial, normally people prove that they are safe. Now, a top secret document, uh, which came my way, actually said, and we're going back to the very beginning here when cell phones were coming out. It actually, it was published by the uh, American government and it was addressed to all Western governments. And it said, and I'm going to paraphrase this, it said, deceive the populations because if they know the truth, it will have an impact on industrial output. Or profit. In other words, lie to the people, otherwise it will affect our profit margin. Mm -hmm. 
we and other Western governments set up a committee. We worked out how to lie or deceive the population to the known. And it, and it was published by the World Health Organization and they kept it secret. And, it's, and I've got that secret document too. Right. Um, Can you they, share that with me at all? Uh, absolutely. Right. Um, and of course, 2,000 military papers used in microwave warfare. 2,000 uh, knew, we knew before they even came out how dangerous they were. But they also knew the profit that was going to be made. Mm -hmm. um, so they said, lie to the people or deceive the people and we will make our industrial profit. That was the first bit. So there was no safety trial because they knew that they weren't safe. Right. And do you uh, th think that's the first bit? The yeah. second part of your question, which was uh, why conclusive proof is difficult. why conclusive proof. <clears throat> that is something they say. They put it out and then said there is no conclusive proof or no convincing evidence. In other words, convincing to them. Mm. Um, no conclusive proof. Now, I, I've said this at conferences, uh, and I talk to hundreds of scientists, usually around 400, uh, and I, I explain it to them. <clears throat> and I say, look, if one of you stood up now and shot me dead, you would go to trial and a jury would, would no doubt find you guilty. They require a balance of probability. If you want conclusive proof, that scientifically and medically is unobtainable. Because in the time it took you to fire that gun and the bullet to reach me, there are thousands of things in my body that could have stopped and caused me to just drop dead. Now, for conclusive proof, you've got to prove that one of those things did not happen and the bullet went into a dead person. Mm. There is no conclusive proof. This is why they use that phrase. They've used it with smoking. They've used it with uh, Agent Orange and, and all the other things that, that the government have got away with. Um, it, it's their, their catchphrase. They, mm. Fine, give us conclusive proof uh, and we'll listen. This program is sponsored by Mouse Mesh. Mice can squeeze through gaps the thickness of a pencil. This simple, effective solution will not only prevent mice, it's also a barrier against wasps, bees and slugs. So, so do you think <clears throat> one of the reasons why they've been able to uh, hoodwink the public and get this technology in and without the public complaining is because it's essentially invisible? It, it, it is invisible, but the other thing that they've not told you is that these are chemically addictive. They are like drugs. Microwaves. Microwaves, and this we're going back to warfare. Um, they are chemically addictive, <clears throat> and if you want I can give you the chemicals, but I'll explain it simply. They can, when you're using them and you're being exposed to them, particularly iPads and cell phones, they can induce, uh, as well as the harmful effects, they can induce effects like morphine and marijuana mm. in the brain, particularly in children, as well as suicidal tendencies right. and aggression. But they can also induce marijuana and morphine. Mm. Uh, they are addictive. And this is why... Uh, when you see children, you try taking, and I was a teacher for 30 years, you try comfort confiscating mm. uh, and they will stand yeah. their ground and yeah. you're not allowed to touch them and, and they won't give mm. uh, you. As a parent, try taking one mm. away from a child. Right. Now, we mentioned ionizing radiation mm. earlier mm. on and science agrees that anything above ultraviolet is damaging. That's that's not really... Dis and ultraviolet. Dis yeah, that's not disputed mm. by the government and, yeah. and they wouldn't put anything... Right. They wouldn't put any ionizing radiation in a product generally. Right. Well, you know, you maybe got like you, the, the thing on okay. your watch or whatever. But, yep. but generally, it's <clears throat> it's considered dangerous, and they wouldn't do it. Right. As you go 
down the spectrum. You say that as a, as a broad brush rule, the higher the frequency, the more damaging, but, it, but not, not strictly because you've no, got... No, in fact, uh, no, and I must correct you here yep. and I apologise. Yep. Uh, in fact, the, the microwave wave band is actually uh, more dangerous in long term. <clears throat> right. Um, because the, uh, and this, this is good timing, this, mm. um, a document was published on the 1st of July mm -hmm. by our government now recognising what I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. Now, I knew it way back in the 50s. It was published and kept secret by our government and the military and other, the American government, in the early 70s. And on the 1st of July, so now we are 46 years later, mm -hmm. they have said what we kept secret in the 70s was actually true. I've got the document there. Mm -hmm. um, and it was published on the 1st of July. Very few people will know it exists. It was virtually sneaked out as a subsection, as a subsection. Um, it was sneaked out, uh, and it, I've read it 10 times, but they've actually now said that this non-ionizing radiation can cause biological damage in the body, which is what we've been saying mm -hmm. all of the time. <clears throat> so, and the reason we know why it does this is because we're ionizing go straight to the DNA, this affects the edge of the cell, and then there's a knock-on effect through the cell, which, and, and I can go through the technical words, if you've got doctors listening to this, that's not a problem. I can go through all the technical words, but it goes through all the cellular processes and damages the DNA via a cellular process. Right. Because when cells are damaged, uh, what they will do, rather than have the DNA turn cancerous, which it can do, they will try and destroy the cell, apoptosis, they will try and destroy the cell to prevent it turning damage, uh, cancerous. So they've actually published on the 1st of July, and I can show you the page, uh, that this actually takes place. So in fact they're saying that no matter what the low level, you can now get cancer from this mm -hmm. and it should be noted that children and pregnant women can absorb 20% more dangerous microwaves or they're 20% more dangerous in their bodies mm. because of the water content um, and other biological factors. So in fact the government are now saying that the non-ionizing down there mm. is as dangerous as the top lot. Right. And they cannot say it isn't. All right. And that's taken them 46 years to come out with that. Yeah. Now, when you've got <clears throat> electromagnetic wave and it hits a conductor, it induces electric current. Right. And it's the electric current which uh, is going to mess with various things in your body. Yep. And we are 70% water, which is a conductor. Right. So just explain <coughs> all of the different <coughs> parts, because we've got hormones, antibodies, neurotransmitters, endocrine glands, all of these things that are going to be affected by unwanted uh, electrical uh, currents. Yeah, th th very easy to, to understand and explain. Um, as the microwaves come into the body, they set up an electric current, just like an aerial. Uh, it's how aerials work. They set up an electric current. The electric current goes to ground, as all electric currents do. The electric current in the body takes the path of least resistance. The path of least resistance in the body is rather like the motorways in the UK. They carry all the hormones, the antibodies, the neurotransmitters. So now with those going down the same trunk roads, you've got the electric current. 
they know where they're going in the body because of a small electrical charge that matches another electrical charge and they know where they're going. It's, it's a bit like if I go to the Paris underground and I can't speak a word of French and I've got a map and I'm on the underground and I'm traveling with everybody else on the tube. That's everything going through the body and I have my map which is electrically charged and I know when this matches that I get off mm. and it's like somebody tipexing out some of the letters and now when I get there I think is it or isn't it I may get off I may not now initially that won't have much of effect but over the months and over the years and depending on your immune system and your body uh, makeup and your general health, over the years that will start to have an effect. Mm -hmm. And then you get what are listed by the World Health Organization and the government papers up to the four and a half thousand physiological and neurological illnesses that our government now says you can get from microwaves and have been listed by the World Health Organization and have been known since the 70s. Uh, and this is why, as I say, when they put a transmitter up, it generally takes 18 months before you get the first group of symptoms. Right. <clears throat> Just tell us uh, uh, how they affect uh, a cell with the analogy of a house. Okay, um, with, it, it, not all the complicated long words, um, just the analogy of a house. Yeah. Okay, um, the, uh, if you, uh, as I say at conferences uh, to non-scientists, you know, you, you go back to your house and imagine your house is a cell in your body. They work exactly the same. You have nutrients and gases coming in and water coming in that you need to survive. You have waste products going out and waste gases which are poisonous going out uh, that are deadly poisonous and will kill you if they stay in. If, like microwaves attacking a cell, if something starts to go wrong in your house, the electricity keeps going, the sanitation breaks down, uh, things start to go wrong, initially you will cope and you will get around it. But as the situation gets worse and your health starts to deteriorate, you then have what is commonly known and accepted as microwave sickness. Yeah. And that will start to creep up and we have people who are uh, in fact recognized by this government in writing and I have the document mm -hmm. the government will say it doesn't exist it does because I've got it right. and it was published um, they will say uh, that they have said that there are people who are more sensitive to this pollution building up the carbon dioxide isn't getting out the sewerage isn't getting out the house uh, and I mean, you, you can have cholera building up, all sorts of nasties. Mm. Even the air you breathe can affect you. And that is really what is happening in the cell. Okay, so we, we've discussed uh, some of the physical effects that microwave radiation can have on the body. Just tell us about melatonin and what its role is in the body and how that can be affected. It's, this was known um, and published quite a while ago is the, you, you have a little gland, the pineal gland in the brain. <clears throat> and when daylight stops and it becomes night, as, as we are now, daylight is going through your eyes, electromagnetic wave, it is setting up an electrical signal that goes to the back of the brain. The pineal gland 
picks up the movement of this electricity going through the brain and it knows it is daytime and to put it simply it doesn't send out nighttime melatonin. <clears throat> now when you close your eyes and go to sleep this current stops the pineal gland realizes that uh, it is night it makes nighttime melatonin the melatonin is used by the immune system to boost the body's immune system from its suffering during the day and in the morning you wake up with a beautifully new immune system that's the theory now when you go to sleep in a microwave field let's say you have one of these walkabout phones or an, a, a tablet or something that is transmitting <clears throat> that goes straight through the brain straight through the skull the pineal gland detecting an electric current it, it's and for anyone listening scientists it's the calcite crystals in the pineal gland they detect the electric current they still think it is daytime and then it becomes non-effective uh, in terms of uh, rebooting the immune system <clears throat> right. so it's not quite sure now whether it's day or night and you can wake up with your immune system sort of 20 percent reduced after a heavy magnetic field or any percent reduced right um, <clears throat> so and again this is why after sort of a year 18 months uh, and this is the normal trail of symptoms with microwave sickness right. it always starts with suppression of the immune system okay now <clears throat> i want to come on now barry to <clears throat> mental effects of microwaves and then possibly come on to um, mind control now just w w we've mentioned it before about the uh, 64 bc in egypt was the first time someone is known to have noticed the effects <coughs> of yep. uh, the particular frequencies on the, on the brain now That's, uh, ptolemy yeah so d just to explain what entrainment means first. okay um your brain works um, on a rhythm it has a, a, a regular rhythm like if you're bouncing on a trampoline every different part of your body now is vibrating every different part is vibrating <clears throat> and your brain is no different you have your own brain waves you have your vibrational frequencies cellular frequencies and every part is vibrating now the easiest way to describe this is if you are bouncing on a trampoline and you will bounce at your own regular frequency <clears throat> if a 50 stone man jumps on and starts bouncing you are forced to bounce at his frequency so you now join in and bounce with him <clears throat> Now I have changed the natural frequency of your brain. That is called entrainment. Mm -hmm. And whilst your brain is entrained, it may not function properly. Mm -hmm. And it's been shown and written uh, in The Lancet that a child who uses a cell phone just for two minutes, two minutes, their brains are entrained for up to two hours afterwards. Right. So if a child makes a two-minute call in the playground at school, then their behaviour may be changed for up to two hours, which is the next two lessons or a long lesson. Um, that is entrainment. <clears throat> now, if you continue to use a cell phone and you never really get back to your rhythm that is called long-term potentiation so if the man 
bounces for a long time and there's no way you can get out of this, then the man jumps off, you now have long-term potentiation and it can take you up to six weeks to right. recover. And this is why uh, when you use a cell phone, and we're going back to the microwave warfare, mm -hmm. it is known that a um, bomb disposal, mm -hmm. um, I was told uh, in, in military language how stupid I was <clears throat> to expose, because there was a, a very difficult bomb I was taking to pieces underwater. Uh, and, and I came up and said, I need to do this in daylight where I can see what I'm doing. And the officer <laughs> in military language suggested how stupid I was mm -hmm. and take it back down because he said the microwaves, if they don't aim at the bomb, they'll aim it at your head mm. and they'll make you make a mistake. Right. And, yeah. and that was my introduction and that intrigued me. Um, and it is known to be quite prevalent in children. Right. Uh, and this is where you start to get all of the neurological and behavioral effects uh, from cell phones and microwaves right. uh, in the brain. Right, now, now there's, there's been studies done which have revealed that different frequencies can have different causes yep. in the brain. And this links in to microwave weapons. So I've got a list here that y you feature in your 2001 document where four and a half hertz can cause paranoia, 6.6 hertz can cause depression or suicide, 11 hertz manic behavior and anger, 25 hertz blindness if aimed at the head, heart attack if aimed at the heart. So you, I've noted here that there's a list of 25 or 30 frequencies that can in, induce physiological or neurological uh, illnesses. Can, can you expand on that at all, Barry? I mean, Well, I mean, it isn't just the one. Um, can I just run through some of the main, six or seven of the main things without going into all the complicated names? Okay. Um, <clears throat> morphine, uh, this is what you, you can sense uh, uh, from microwaves. Morphine, marijuana, hunger, and we're not talking, I think I fancy a sandwich, we're talking I'm going to break a window and steal a pie. Hunger, hopelessness, which is suicidal depression, aggression, um, we're not talking sort of uh, an angry person. We are talking major aggression. And the 6.6 .6 you mentioned there, that, that is also linked to sexual aggression. So if you get aggression and the sexual aggression, um, you can have the... the uh, after that, you can have um, nightmares and hallucinations, which are very common. And you can have the, the sense that the microwaves are really making you ill and you've got to do anything to get away from them. And it's not unusual for me to receive a message from somebody living in a hole in the ground, um, which is the only place they can go. <laughs> Uh, and it's published quite often. So you can have these. Now, if I can just explain to the people watching this, <clears throat> to, to have those induced in the brain, you need a small current of two milliamps mm -hmm. to have any of those. You can have from a cell phone, especially with reflective surfaces like mirrors or windows, you can have, or somebody else using one near you, you can have up to 34 milliamps quite easily in the brain. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not to say you're going to get 17 times these effects because the brain can't do that. But depending on angles and circumstances and waveforms, you can get any of them or any combination Right. Them. <clears throat> okay, but you now you're gone. Do you want to fin no, finish or can go I? On. You're to, you're um, asking the question whether domestic products like mobile phones can create these effects. I'm interested in 
what weapons may have been developed. Because if you're going to develop a weapon to deliberately do that, the mobile phones are doing it accidentally, so they're not as, let's say, targeted. If you've got, if, if you decide to, that you're going to try and make someone commit suicide, for example. Oh yeah, that's uh, been done. That, that has been done. Yeah. So, so here's a question, uh, Barry. Do you think they could be as sophisticated as to be able to make someone make decisions and specifically perform four or five actions, like kneel down, tie a noose around their neck, and actually uh, restrict their 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 breathing and, and kill themselves? Do you, do you think that it could be that advanced? Oh, absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, absolutely. They can be used to make people ill, as they have been. Um, I have seen a document where we used it in the, on the Catholics in Northern Ireland, mm -hmm. <clears throat> because if you're feeling ill and run down, you're not going to become a terrorist. Mm -hmm. um, I have seen a document where the Americans used it on the women at Greenham Common to give them cancer, because that cuts down. I have seen a document, and I've mentioned it, I've published it, uh, where as an experiment, uh, ex uh, microwaves were aimed at women to see how many of them would miscarry. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I do know that from uh, government documents, it, it is incredibly easy, and I won't go into too much detail, it is incredibly easy. It takes, on average, <clears throat> 30 hours to break a person down psychologically. 30 hours. 30 okay. hours. Yeah. Most people can be broken down into a hallucinogenic mess in 30 hours. Then what you can do is you can then start inducing it's called auditory hallucination, and I know all the frequencies. You can induce sounds into this person. And this is used in stores. Not many people know that. You can induce sound. We'll go back to the weapons. You can induce sound. Now, I've broken you down. No disrespect. I'm, you're just a, you know. I've broken you yeah. down, and you are... A, a, a total psychological mess on the floor. Now, I already, I've studied you, and I know you are deeply, deeply religious. Now I come in, and I, using auditory hallucination, which has been used for many years, I talk to you as God. You're God. Yeah. Nobody else can hear it. If other people are in the room... It's this voice to skull you're talking about. A voice to the um, right. ossicles in the ear. Right, right. They will then pick it up, vibrate, yeah. and send yeah. it in. So they get a voice in, in their in, head. In, in fact, it actually goes into the cochlea. Yeah. Yeah, you, you actually hear the voice. Yeah. Nobody else will hear it, but you will. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I'm your God, and I can say, I can get you out of this mess. Thank you for believing in me. And then I start to reward you and get you better. And then I can say, you, re you appreciate the person responsible for this is that religion or that government officer. Mm. Uh, and if you say, no, it can't be, then I would, you know, and anything well, you've done. Here's a question then, yeah? Barry. This might be a bit sort of subtle. Do you think if, if they, they break someone down over a period of 30 <clears> hours <throat> and then they come in with some psychological manipulations yeah, through, through yeah. the voice, yeah? Do you think they could make that voice sound like my voice or your voice or anyone's voice? Oh, absolutely, it... without a shadow of a doubt. Right. They can make it sound like any voice. And the other thing they're doing so with they, this... So it could, it, they could make it sound like a dead person was talking to them. Oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, and, and I mean, they, they, they have machines where you can talk in and a voice, a different voice will come out the other end. Mm. Um, that they're used often for disguising voices. Um, and the other thing, and to show this is instant, is this has actually gone to court. Chain stores in the United States <clears throat> adopted this auditory hallucination to prevent uh, shoplifters. And if they suspected a shoplifter, they had a machine, microwave machine, they beamed it at the shoplifter, 
we are watching you. If you touch that, you will go to jail. Put it back. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, and, and you, you're looking around and everyone is just sandwiched. You know, but, and you're thinking, well, where'd that voice come from? And they cut down the shoplifting. But then they said, well, hang on. If we can stop them doing that, we can also go to other people and say, this is really worth buying. Mm. Your partner would love this ring. Mm. Uh, and, and they've started using it and they found that their sales went up $60,000 or something mm. a month in, in nine months. Uh, so they're using it and it was taken to court. Mm -hmm. um, but the industry won because they said, we are not causing harm. Uh, and they won their case and it's adopted by fast food outlets. Right. Other stores, uh, and it's, it's global. Mm. Uh, and you can have it going into a shop now. Uh, I went to Bridge End. Can I tell you this? Yeah. <clears throat> I went to Bridge End. Um, I was guest scientific speaker. It was the new council building. Uh, they were all there. Before I spoke, I went around to see where the transmitters were going up. I looked at the hills. I looked at where you would have reflections and standing waves. And just through my own instinct, and I've been in this since 1959, mm -hmm. and I thought this is going to be a bad area. <clears throat> I produced the evidence in my report and one of the things I said was that you will have cancers, leukemias, certainly childhood uh, miscarriages, injuries, that sort of thing, and you will have suicides. I knew because uh, microwaves are known. It, it is not unusual where you have microwave set up uh, to have childhood suicides. Bridge End is, is not a one-off. Um, <clears throat> whether the, the isolation of the place and the fact they have alcohol and drugs exacerbated the depression, but depression is usually the first neurological symptom. It's on every government document. Depression, suicide. I sense the evidence of, uh, and this was about 18 months, my, my mm -hmm. dating could be slightly out, it was about, when I said to them, you will have suicides, <clears throat> um, and two of, uh, one thing that struck me, and it's only ever happened three times, two of the counsellors laughed, mm -hmm. and one of them, they, they filed up behind me, I was sitting there tidying up, and one of them patted me on the shoulder as if to say, and smiled or smirked, as if to say, thank you for coming, but leave this to the grown-ups, yeah. uh, uh, and went off. And it's only the third time that's happened. 18 months-ish after I gave that talk, the suicides started. I wrote back to the board and said, and I'm going to give you a copy to put mm -hmm. on. And I said, I predicted this. This is why these are the government documents that says this will happen. And I laid it all out. And of course, it came back. The suicides, the reason was undetermined. But it wasn't. Um, it is not new to Bridge End. They are not new to microwaves, uh, along with miscarriages and everything else. Uh, it was predicted and it happened. HARP, even in its, um, the, uh, and I, I can't remember, the, um, the document mm -hmm. that, that went to the government, that what it could be used for, um, it actually says uh, producing weather changes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, you, you have a new weapon, and if we just look at this, Microwaves are the new atomic bomb. You can change weather, cause immense disasters in countries, mm -hmm. and blame it on nature. It is. It cannot be traced back to you. 
you can use it as it has been used by governments, our government. It has been used and you can use it to make people ill or to experiment on them. And it is irretraceable because you cannot yeah. get the microwaves back out the air and say, look, there's your, your trail. It is an undetectable stealth weapon. That is the beauty of it. Mm. Um, or the harm. And this is the new atomic bomb. And countries have latched onto this. And you, you can change Olympic athletes' performances from satellite onto one person who's, who's performing. You, you can do everything muscularly, psychologically, neurologically. It, it is a beautiful weapon that is irre, irretraceable. You, you cannot work out where it's come from mm. or who's done it. So, so <clears throat> say they were experimenting with weapons in Bridgen or in other places. Yep. Um, you mentioned a white van, satellite, maybe some other technology yep. like HOP. Uh, do, do you think it's as, as sophisticated to be just something like that? Like that, that someone could in a cafe just like a pen or do, there do you is think? A, yep, I've got the document and it may be on the, the, ones, I, the, the ones I give you. Uh, there is a document that they have to be within 150 feet mm -hmm. or meters uh, without looking at it, it's 150 feet or meters of your house. Mm -hmm. But they have a, a, a machine. It can go, it, it looks straight through buildings. Buildings don't exist. It, it will pick up your thermal image. It can watch you having sex in bed. But in particular, it can pinpoint your brain and the other part of this machine, the waves, come in. It can brain scan you it can also scan your endocrine glands. It can work out in your brain which bit, which bit of your brain is actually working, whether it is the aggression or the suicide bit or that. It can work out through brain scans and knowledge now, and it can influence them right. uh, to exacerbate it or stop it. But they have to be within 150 meters right. or whatever. But that they can actually change brain waves directly right. from where you are. So if something is within that proximity, oh, yeah. it's extremely precise, the level of, uh, let's say, control they've got over your brain. Oh, with, absolutely. By being so close. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Uh, now. Yeah, but one thing that, that needs to be understood before we scare the entire nation. Um, the reason they experiment is because it doesn't work on everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll give you an example. Um, if I go to your local university, no, let, let, let's pick a more general place. If I go to your local airport, um, and think of everybody that walks in and out of your airport in a week. Mm -hmm. This is a thought experiment. <clears throat> and I have all of these people of all ages, all nationalities, everything. And I say, I'm going to carry out an experiment. I'm going to insist that you all have two pints of beer a day and smoke 10 cigarettes. Now, some people will be ill and die almost instantly. <laughs> some people will take a bit longer. Some people will take um, years. And this is the same with every single biological experiment. It's called a distri distribution curve. Mm. Uh, some will be ill straight away. The curve will go up as they get ill and die. Mm. Then it will level out mm. because there will be people who are taking it but are generally unaffected for many, many years. And then it will come down and people at the end will say, this is a good experiment, Barry. We've been on it 10 years. Any chance of up in the cigarettes and up in the beer? Mm. Uh, and you will have around 40% mm. totally unaffected. Now, it will be the same with microwaves. Mm. You will have those electrosensitive, the children, those who absorb more, 
uh, and when I say children, I'm not being disrespectful, under 26. Mm. In terms of microwave damage, you are under 26. It will damage you up to that age mm -hmm. for reasons that are very complicated and I won't go into. Uh, and then it will hit the, the sick and the adults and the elderly. Then it will level out. And then you'll get 40%. And this is why they experiment on. They're trying to so look at people and say, well, can we narrow this down? Uh, because if we want, let's say you want to hit, which has been done, a particular religious group that you dislike. Mm -hmm. um, you can say, well, what frequencies will affect these, but these don't become affected. Can we change this and right. change that and do this and just see if we can get those? Mm -hmm. So. This is why people experiment. Yeah, they're, they're calibrating their weapon in a yeah, way. Yeah, they're, they're calibrating, but this is why it is done. Yeah, okay. And, I mean, have you actually seen any, any weapons the size of a pen, or would it be like a, a dish on a, inside a van, or what, can you uh, describe any, them at all? Any, uh, and I'm, I'm being very, very careful here, because you never know where this is going, and, and there are people who think, I really don't like my mother-in-law, or if so-and-so died, I would inherit. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and, and this would be a perfect way to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. um, there are people, and it doesn't take much knowledge, to me, a clever GCSE student who understands uh, the uh, workings of a magnetron and uh, resonance could re make such an instrument and reduce it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this is why anybody could do it. Right. Anybody, and you wouldn't need much. You can actually get them. Uh, you can buy them on the internet now, um, microwave transmitters. They're illegal, but you can buy them, the same as you can buy guns. Mm -hmm. uh, but you, you can buy them. The secret, which is what I do not uh, publish unless it's been published already um, but and I will only do it generally if I'm talking to like the Institute of Neurology or somebody mm -hmm. I will go into the frequency the, the secret that people don't know if you said I'm going to make mm -hmm. a microwave weapon mm -hmm. you wouldn't know the combination of pulse frequencies right. Right. or other frequencies to put them on right. that is the secret right that's gonna Really yeah, and that's where you've people. got to get it, and this is why people are experimenting right. because they don't have the list I've got or other people have got, okay. uh, and and they're they're practicing. Right now, I just <coughs> uh, just quickly, Barry, um, mm -hmm. what do you know what the woodpecker thing was all about? This was these radio signals that in the nineteen seventies Russia were sending out across America. I think it was this woodpecker radio signal. Do, do you know what that was about? I do. Um, but uh, there, is, there is a list of all of these titles and it's very easy for me, we're going back uh, to the 50s, it's very easy for me to become confused. I mean, in, in a paper I had published in 2013, or 2014, I think it was, I listed about 12 of them, but they cross over mm -hmm. You have MK Ultra and Woodpecker and um, lots of them, and they cross over. And it's very easy to say, well, this one was responsible for this. But in fact, they're used in three or four of them. Right. So what I will say is that in several of them, including Woodpecker, um, microwaves are used. They are used as bacteriological weapons because... Um, If you uh, and, and we, if if you take a cell out of your body, and a cell out of a tree, and a cell out of a bacterium, and then and, and, and everything else, and then my dog, and you take the DNA out of all of these, the four bases in the DNA, what the DNA is made of, mm. they're all identical. Mm -hmm. Any tree can read your DNA sequence. Mm -hmm. My dog can read my DNA sequence. Mm. 
it won't do them much good because they don't grow hair and have eye color and what so they only use the bit that they use but there is one biological blueprint for every living thing including bacteria and what they've come up with with weapons was well hang on if we can produce a pulse frequency uh, and these are the names of all of these things a pulse frequency that will only reduce the immune system of cows yeah or will spring anthrax back to life in the soil right or so is it target in certain um dna sequences yes yeah. i'll give you one example and i've gave this in court in america because i was asked this question by a barrister and i said supposing i wanted to get rid of the american wheat fields <clears throat> destroy america and make a billion dollars myself all i have to do is genetically prepare a bacterium and this has been done and published 20 years ago if i produce a bacterium that will lie dormant like anthrax in the soil for hundreds or thousands of years it will just lay there and i can i can produce a bacterium that will respond to a particular microwave resonant frequency in other words a vibration yeah when you grave diggers get this when they dig graves the frequency 700 nanometers of light can trigger what was known as bubonic plague that 700 right. nanometers will trigger bubonic plague that's mm -hmm. known and grave diggers can contract bubonic plague yeah. um, and it's easily treated these days it's the same thing if you have the frequency that will trigger like anthrax or, or another germ microorganism mm -hmm. all I've got to do is go to the United States or fly over it with with uh, contrails or chemtrails um, or go past on a train and drop it out the window. Mm -hmm. All I've got to do is leave the bacillus in the wheat fields mm -hmm. or if it's beef, foot and mouth in the beef fields. Just leave it dormant and I can come back here for 50 years. Then if with one of these harp devices which are now all over the world, I, all I've got to do is push a button, send the microwave frequency, it will come down trigger the anthrax, trigger the grain. You so, know. So, so you think the woodpecker was something similar to that? Well, it is. And, and I, it's triggering I, something else. Yeah, and I, I cause total, you can't sell your grain and you can't feed your country. Right. In the meantime, I produce cattle or I produce grain in my country mm -hmm. and I say to the world, well, you can't now have the American wheat fields and I've said all this in court in a case similar to this, um, I have got five million acres which I will sell you, but I'm going to quadruple the price because mine is the only one in the world. Mm -hmm. I make myself a billion dollars and I destroy the Americas. Um, and this is where we are. This is why microwaves, and you can do it with any living structure, right. any animal, any tree, I can cause any tree, any forest to, so we, down to become infectious. I can do anything with any living organism. Right. That is known. Did the, was the woodpecker some sort of grid system where you had <coughs> nodes <coughs> on each point of the, of the grid? Or? Yeah, well, well, you have standing waves. Standing waves, um, yeah. uh, And this is why I say if you insulate your house, what happens is if you... If, if I wanted, and, and this is another thing going back to Bridge End, when I looked at the transmitters, mm. uh, you know, and you've got one over there and you've got one over there. Now, when they all converge, uh, and, and it's the same in any microwave oven, this is why, and to answer that lady's question, what is happening? Mm. Uh, and, and this would be good for a researcher, uh, and it hasn't been done, but it would be good for a researcher. If you, 
if you have a microwave oven, they rotate. Mm -hmm. Now, they rotate because with the microwaves coming in, they produce standing waves like a chessboard. Mm -hmm. And you have areas where there are nothing mm -hmm. and areas where you have magnified waves. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is why animals will leave a, a, usually a place where they sleep and sleep somewhere else. They detect them. Mm -hmm. Now the same is in Bridge End. When I looked at the transmitters, you can see, I know the wavelength, I know the standing wave size, and you can see what they call hot spots. Right. Yeah. So you have hot spots. <clears throat> and if you are living in a hot spot, then you are almost doomed to failure. Mm -hmm. Whereas the person next door or in the next room is fine, but you are sleeping in a hot spot. And it's exacerbated if you have metal springs in your bed because they will pick up the microwaves, like all metal, it's why you don't put metal in a microwave oven. Mm -hmm. They will absorb them and then re-emit them into the body at the most dangerous time, mm -hmm. which is when you're asleep. Now, if you plot the suicides with hot pots, I would suspect you, that you will get some correlation. This program is sponsored by Mouse Mesh. If you're in the construction industry, we've introduced Mouse Mesh, inbuilt with interchangeable fronts, six different colors, and stainless steel. Now, you mentioned the Greenham Common uh, protesters, yep. and you've also given the example of uh, the US Embassy in Russia, which was uh, hit upon by microwave uh, weapons. Yep, absolutely. Uh, and rather than blow the whistle, the US <coughs> just studied it and, and said, hey, this is a good, this is good, yep. good technology, we'll try and copy it. Um, now, we also have um, many people claiming to be what's called targeted individuals. Yep. And I've heard I've heard you say that just as in say the say the US embassy th there was maybe a building across the road which had some technology in it or buildings firing uh, microwaves that it can be done in a domestic setting where a house across the road or or a van or, or whatever. Here's a question is there a, a case of domestic I mean, that, that's a political thing, U.S. Embassy, but a domestic targeted individual where they've actually f found a organization or a person with a, with a, a microwave box across the road. Is, is there any case that's been brought to court of a targeted individual? Because the whole, I find it a little bit similar to the UFO community where there is, there is a truth at, at the bottom of it there probably are targeted individuals, right. but, but I think yeah. there's a lot of attention seekers and there's some delusional people in there as well. And it, I think maybe that's done deliberately in order to prevent you finding out who, are, who is being targeted. So I think there's a lot of misinformation in the targeted individual uh, community. W w what are your thoughts on right. that? I, I need to go to the loo first. Right. <laughs> uh, this is a long answer. Right, okay. Do I can answer it, it's a long answer. Right. I, I need to go back to the beginning because uh, you made a little mistake. Right, okay. Um, the Russians didn't microwave the American embassy mm -hmm. they, to cause harm to the Americans initially. Right. <clears throat> the, the Russians wanted, because we're right in the Cold War here, mm -hmm. the Russians wanted to listen to what the Americans were saying. Yeah. And their first attempt was to put a big plaque on the wall in, in the American embassy, in, in the ambassador's office. Yeah. And they had a transmitter in the plaque that was sitting silent and stationary and not doing anything. And so when they put the plaque in, the first thing the Americans did was scan it for transmissions and microphones. Nothing all clear. <clears throat> what the Russians then did was every time there was talking in the ambassador's office, he was on the phone or something, they beamed microwaves in. That triggered the microphone. Mm -hmm. It picked up the speech and then it triggered it back. So they, they would then listen. Mm -hmm. So they activated the microphone mm -hmm. in the plaque when they were speaking 
and then when the speaking stopped, they turned the microphone off. Right. Uh, and so every day when it was checked, there was nothing coming out. Right. And they found that the microwaves coming in caused the ambassadors to be ill. The, the Americans couldn't work out why all the ambassadors were becoming ill. Um, and that's what actually led to that. But in the meantime, the Russians also worked out <clears throat> that the various, when people were speaking in, because they, they didn't have plaques in every room, but they worked out that the vibration of the glass, when people are talking like we're talking, mm -hmm. the glass is vibrating. If you sent the microwave to the glass, they reflected slightly out of phase and that one out of phase that could be rejigged into speech right so now they're microwaving other rooms right and hence this is where you're getting the secretaries having breast cancers and miscarrying right um, and they both at the same time realized that microwaves were a perfect stealth weapon mm -hmm. um, okay. and this is where they started to develop them now, targeted people, <clears throat> and I get calls daily, and when I plug my phone in, there'll be messages there, I guarantee, from targeted people. 99% <clears throat> of people who ring me saying they are being targeted are ringing on a cell phone. And I say to them, <clears throat> that can cause four and a half thousand different neurological and physiological symptoms in your body which may not manifest themselves for hours, months, even years. Mm -hmm. So if you wake up in the night after this with something going on in your brain <clears throat> or body, it doesn't mean you're being targeted, it could be that you have targeted yourself. And I say the only way first to determine if you're being targeted is throw your cell phone into a bucket of water. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I can't do that. I need it because I have to talk to her, do this, do that. And I say, well, then there is absolutely no way you can convince me you're being targeted because anything you say that you are being targeted by or how can be caused by yourself with yourself. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> now there are people being targeted. Um, that that goes without saying, and it is documented. There are people being targeted, and if you say, "I have they found transmitters in people's houses or in streets?" Not to my knowledge. Somebody watching this may say, "May say yes, we found one." because they don't need to put them um, near people's houses or, or in streets. They can use the existing transmitting stations mm -hmm. um, with a little adaption. That has been done. I know that's been done. Mm -hmm. But there are people with implants yeah, that can gonna, produce... Yeah, I was going to come on to that. <clears throat> yeah. There are people with implants that have been detected. No. They, there are different implants, many different ones. You can have nanotubes that contain certain bacteriums or certain chemicals. They can be triggered by microwaves, by resonant frequency. You can have small transmitters that will run off of the energy in the body that will transmit microwaves. They can be detected you will have little transmitters inside, like my dog has a chip, that you beam microwaves in, like the Russian embassy, it energizes the system, and then it will trigger something and beam microwaves in a particular direction or beam them out, and you can have any combination of the three. Uh, so yes, people, and people can just be targeted from satellite or any transmitting station or any van. So yes, people can be targeted, they can be implanted, they can use bacterium, they can use chemicals, they can use microwaves in the brain, 
uh, they can they can really do anything. Right. So, so <clears throat> in, implants that person would would have had to have had that fitted somehow, and if it's been fitted without their knowledge, um, how would that come about? Do you know of any cases? Yeah. <clears throat> If you're a dentist, they are the favorite people. Um, if you are a dentist <clears throat> and I come to you and I say, look, and, and this is where you're in the gray area. <clears throat> Let's say you have one of the world's top universities. Uh, and I know several that work on this one of the world's top universities and we come to you, you are a dentist and we say we are bona fide university graduates, doctors, professors, we are working on this particular um, and we will grant you from our research fund $10,000 or £20,000 or something, we will give you that. <clears throat> you have a particular person coming to you they are suffering from uh, epileptic fits, they are suffering from an irregular heart, whatever. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> what we would like you to do is put this implant just under the tooth when you put it in, or the filling, nothing else. It's important they don't know about this because it will affect the, the follow-up study if they right. know they're being watched, they won't act naturally. It's mm. important they don't act naturally. Um, do this, we guarantee it, that all it will do is measure and record. Uh, we will watch the person and if at any stage, if it, we, dis, we find it, it's harming them or whatever, we will ask you to take it out. And people say, yes, we will do this. I'm helping science. I'm improving their life, <clears throat> I'm cancelling fits or a heart arrhythmia or um, manic depression, uh, I'm doing this. <clears throat> the university students are genuine, but what they don't usually get told is that a government department like the CIA is behind the funding mm. and behind the research, even in some cases the students don't know mm -hmm. this. And when it's published and it's written up and it works, then you get the government departments saying, right, now our scientists will actually change and use and improve on this. Right. So it may not be the university to blame. Yeah. It will then go to the military scientists and they will then say, right, they've done the groundwork now we will fine tune it and do it to these so, people. So, so dental <clears throat> implant, um, can you cause things in people through a dental implant as you could with a brain implant? Absolutely. So how would that work? Because obviously the, the brain, um, with one scientist called them stimosevers, where... Well, it depends you what you're inducing. If you're inducing waves to react and interfere with brain waves, okay. But if you're introducing a chemical, um, <clears throat> like an andamide, uh, that can produce um, a soporific morphine effect, or you want to affect the ventral pallidum from one of the cranial nerves uh, to the frontal cortex, yeah, down to uh, the the front of the ventral pallidum to the frontal cortex. Um, that will induce suicidal tendencies, or the frontal cortex to the amygdala, that will... So that, that could come out through a tooth that, implant? Oh it? yeah, that will induce aggression. Right. Um, so uh, uh, it depends if you're introducing a chemical or a wave. Right, I see. And, okay. Now, and, and the chemicals in the body are minuscule. Yeah. Minuscule. Uh, and if you send a signal to the glands that produces them to overproduce. Now, what, what, what about uh, brain implants, Barry? Do you, do, you, do you think that they could be being used? Oh, they are being used. I, I, I've seen, I, I often get some x-rays from people saying, look, we found it, there it is. And in fact, I, I've had x-rays from people with more than one. 
and, and it, th th these are fitted without their knowledge? Without their knowledge. Right. Uh, now, and that's not difficult uh, to do either. I've, I've got some quotes <coughs> from um, Dr. Rowney Kilder. Have you you've heard of Dr. Rowney, Dr. Rowney Kilder? She was Chief I, I, Medical Officer of Finland. She died just recently, actually. Uh, yes. Now, it, it, I'm just... Uh, this comes from a 2001 article. Dr. Ross Aidy has found out that by using 0.75 milliwatt per square centimetre intensity of pulse modulated microwave at a frequency of 450 megahertz, it is possible to control all aspects of human behaviour. Would you oh, go along just, with that? Oh, not just Ross Aidy, um, and I'm choosing my words now very, very carefully. Um, Ross Aidy is, is known worldwide for brain manipulation and body manipulation through microwaves. Um, the same as uh, a, a chap who's gone on record, Jose Delgado, yeah. um, who also does it. And Jose Delgado has said, I can induce any mood or behavior. Um, and, and this is possible. It is possible to induce through these chips uh, or microwaves any mood or behavior. You can induce people to kill. Not everybody, but you can induce people to kill. You can induce them to kill themselves. You can induce them to do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, that is possible. All right. <clears throat> and it's written, it's, date, it's stated. Yeah. Let me just read out a few of these quotes. Uh, okay. this, this technology links the brains of people via implanted microchips to satellites controlled by ground-based supercomputers. Implants are inserted uh, to the neck or back or intravenously. Uh, it is possible, it is impossible to detect or remove them. Must mean some impossible to detect. Uh, implanted human beings uh, can be followed everywhere. Their brain function can be remotely monitored by su supercomputers and even altered through the changing of frequencies. Today's microchips operate by means of low frequency radio waves that target them. S uh, but you would say that microwaves as well. Well, the low frequency are the pulses. Right. Okay. Uh, when a five micromillimeter microchip is placed into the optic nerve of the eye, so this is not brain implant, this is an eye implant. Uh, it draws neural impulses from the brain that embody the experiences, smells, sights and voice of the implanted person. Yeah. You, you would go along oh, with absolutely. that? Oh, absolutely. Anything's possible. And in fact, um, it's documented that um, uh, the military are often used for experiment uh, because they, they have a, a well practiced regime, they follow orders, um, <clears throat> military are often used for experiment, along with prisoners. Yeah, and do you, go along, do you go along with the theory that they target l less powerful individuals, so maybe drug addicts, alcoholics, or um, maybe s single women, or, or people who uh, are less likely to put up a fight against something that happens to them, in, 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 yeah, as a general... Um, they, yeah, I mean, I, I've listed in my document, and I can give you the website, it's on my, my thalidomide paper. Um, I've listed the, the people that are used, um, and it is, it, it is drunks, tramps, with no disrespect to the word tramp, uh, street people, um, alcoholics, prisoners, uh, the homeless, uh, the poor. Uh, they will use people who can't actually afford the legal defence or put up a fight. Um, <clears throat> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They, yeah. they tend to use those. The same as they tend to put up transmitters in poor people's areas because they know they don't have the financial or legal resources to take them on. Yeah, yeah, okay. And just to ask you a few broader questions, okay. uh, Barry, which are not necessarily directly related to microwaves. Um, have you read any papers where it's discussed the physical effects of microwaves on matter rather than biology, for example, steel or concrete? Or is it or generally related to biology that, that you've looked into? Um, they can be made to change the physical st 
stature of some matter. Generally, they will go straight through concrete, straight through brick. Um, <clears throat> they will be absorbed by particular metals, um, uh, and, and they, they say um, that if you have implants, metallic implants or pacemakers and that, to stay away from microwaves right. because they can induce currents. But mostly um, I concentrate on cellular structures. Now, <clears throat> um, when, when I've studied electromagnetics, electromagnetic waves, it's, it's m m my recollection is that that EM waves are considered to be a transverse wave as opposed to a longitudinal wave. And yep. there's this guy, Tom Bearden, who I think has worked f for the American uh, Defense, and he's done a lot of work in, in free energy devices and that kind of thing. And he seems to know a lot. And he, now, I saw him giving a talk, and I'm sure he said that he, he was of the opinion that electromagnetic waves were longitudinal. And this is due to the way that an electron spins, it's got this particular spin on it, and when the longitudinal wave hits it that way, rather than move that way, it actually moves at 90 degrees, so it's like that, yeah? And so this is where your longitudinal wave's hitting your aerial, and it causes the, the currents to go that way. Well, okay. You, so, so he's <coughs> disputing, I think, I think, I might be wrong here, that whether, whether the the EM wave might have a, at least a longitudinal component, let's say, as opposed to a... a, a in other words, it's it's the space is moving in its direction of travel, not not perpendicular to its direction of travel. Okay, let, let's let's understand the, the two that we're talking about. <clears throat> um, an ordinary electromagnetic wave, you have the electric part of the wave, which is what people would call static electricity. Static electricity is the electric part of the wave. Perpendicular to that, you have the magnetic wave, what people would call a magnetic field. And they are perpendicular to each other. And they oscillate, yeah. in, in, they oscillate, yeah. <clears throat> and, and as they oscillate, they travel forward at the speed of light. Yeah. Now, if you are talking about um, an alternating current in some form of aerial or transmitting device. Now, the ionosphere is hydrogen and helium. If, if you have an electromagnetic wave producing electricity, that can produce an alternating current, which is like that, yeah. which is like a, a longitudinal wave. Now, a sound wave is a vibrational wave yeah. like that. So Longitude, you could have yeah. a signal, but sound waves <clears throat> will only travel through something that can vibrate, like water, mm. steel, the earth, mm. because the atoms are pushed forward and they come back, yeah. they push the next one yeah. like that. Yeah. So an alternating current is like that. So mm. uh, theoretically, an alternating current could be described as a longitudinal wave. Right, right. <clears throat> now, the other term that he uses, and you, you do hear this now and again with, sometimes you hear the targeted individual community talk about their scalar waves, which to me, the word scalar means it's something which has magnitude, but not direction. Yeah, it th this, it, 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 yeah. Um, I don't think that, are they actually? Yeah, uh, uh, um, a, 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 a scalar is opposite to a vector. Yes. <clears throat> now, um, electromagnetic waves are vectors. They have force. Yeah. yeah. Sound waves are vectors. They have force. Yeah. A scalar is me saying to you one foot, mm. a foot ruler. That doesn't have movement. It doesn't have direction. It is a scalar. It is basically a measurement. <clears throat> now, they have introduced what they call scalar waves. Now, scalar waves, and my knowledge is not well enough to, die, to uh, go too deep into this. Um, they are immensely top secret. Um, 
what they have developed, the, the scientists, through HARP, they have developed like a sound wave where you can also piggyback an electromagnetic wave and they can travel right, you can set up a standing wave right through the planet and you can cause harm to something going on the other side of the planet. Right. You can actually induce a sound wave and they're calling them scalar waves. A um, sound wave is <coughs> only traveling at yeah. a few hundred miles an hour, isn't it? That's it, yeah, uh, 330 meters a second. Yeah. It's 1500 meters a second through metal. Yeah. Um, but they've also managed to get some sort of wave, what they're calling a scalar wave. Scalar is wrong. It, it has to be a vector. Yeah, yeah. But they have got a sort of wave where you can, you can bounce microwaves or other waves up and down the planet and it, it, it expands becomes a standing wave and then you can send the standing wave into some territory right. theoretically to change the weather or cause an earthquake that sort of thing yeah. um, but how that it, it is an immense force because uh, that they have an immense power uh, generated from p things like harp going into the ground they usually reinforce it with other transmitters they set up these standing waves and they send them through the planet but you you can do that that that, that is done no they go backwards and forwards they get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger uh, and then they go whoop uh, and that can be right. done and they call them scalar but that is wrong they are vectors yeah yeah mm -hmm. the, the like a standing wave has the appearance of being scalar doesn't it because yeah. it appears to be going nowhere but it's just two components isn't it yeah uh all right so weather modification then if we just finish with that uh, well it's weather modification it can be um tectonic modification right you can get uh, if you have a volcano, for instance, or plates, earthquake plates, tectonic plates, which are just at that bit, um, and you start increasing the vibration in them. It, it's not difficult to get the vibration, vibrational frequency of magma or rock. Or, <clears throat> in fact, in an earthquake, people don't know this, <clears throat> Um, if you're standing on the ground, uh, let's forget pavements for a minute, you're standing on the ordinary earth. If you're standing on the ground in an earthquake, the vibrational frequency of the earthquake actually turns the soil into a fluid. People don't realise that. This is why the buildings sink. The, the earth actually becomes a fluid. Um, like sand uh, and uh, and you can sink into it now if you set up and you can do this if you set up that particular P wave frequency or Q wave frequency that they have with earthquakes or S wave if you set that to tectonic plates or a particular part of the planet <clears throat> then theoretically it is possible to induce an earthquake yeah. uh, and if, if you induce it, you can probably, if you've got plates there, trigger them off. Uh, I don't know this, I'm, I'm speaking hypothetically, but I could quite believe it if I read it and somebody said they did it. Uh, and this is, this is why they are sending signals. There is no other reason to send signals backwards and forwards in the planet like a microwave oven with sound waves, with all the other... Um, waves, scalar waves they're using uh, and it wouldn't surprise me if they have triggered an earthquake um, and if you can do that let's say by somebody's power station um, yeah it's a good it's a great or weapon. somebody's nuclear you know and you, you want to devastate a country but I mean there, there is no other reason why they are sending waves through the planet no other reason than to cause earthquakes 
or some sort of ground disruption. And if you can focus it, um, focus it into a small area, uh, then you can probably cause a small local earthquake, which on the face of it wouldn't be that dangerous. But if it were near a dam or a nuclear power station, all of that energy, and we're talking billions and billions of watts here, and they tap into the energy of the planet, the Schumann resonance frequencies, and the other relaying stations. Once you've got that sort of energy, it is not difficult to set up a ground-based local earthquake uh, at a vulnerable spot. It is not difficult, and it's irretraceable. You, you, you can't trace it. Now, um, we spoke about whether there's any evidence that specific people are targeted either by uh, handheld devices or white vans or satellites. Rowney Kilda says that it's, it's, it's satellites are used, but they're controlled by supercomputers from bases on Earth. Are you aware of any bases or underground bases that might be responsible for either um, targeting people or, or mind control in the UK it, or a, any particular areas that you that you may have heard about in your research? Um, the nearest one I think to the UK, well we've got one in Cyprus, the UK military. Right. Uh, there's one in Norway. So that's specifically for microwave and mind control in Cyprus? Oh well no, um, they are they are all they are all capable of mind control right. whether you use them for mind control i don't know because they don't tell me right. they have other purposes they 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 have other military purposes and they link with the americas and other countries in the world and they talk to satellites and they do all sorts of things right um if you're saying to me <clears throat> do we have specific devices which are only used for mind control, the answer is, I don't know. Right. It is possible to put them on every single cell tower. If they are there, I don't know. I do know that in the UK, every single cell tower, every single one, comes under the Official Secrets Act. Right. Every one. Um, and you can't pull them but, down. Uh, 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 but... but can I yeah, just finish? Yeah. If you're saying, are they used for mind control? I don't know. Can every big device be used for mind control? Yes. But a cell mm -hmm. tower mm -hmm. is, yep. is sending out mm -hmm. a wave which follows the inverse square law yeah? it's as, as yep. it goes out. So yep. that's not really going to be able to precisely control one person. It, it might, over a, as you said, over a period of days or months. Yeah. But if you want to specifically target someone... Well, you have it, relays. You can have... You have relays on lampposts. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're what, 35 degrees, I yeah, think they are. Yeah, but if you've got... If you've got... Uh, and I know this because I was involved in a spy case. Right. Um, I was involved in a spy case uh, just a few years ago where this was done, right. where you have a cell tower without the knowledge of that particular uh, cell phone industry, mm -hmm. you have somebody going up, uh, tweaking the computer and tweaking the electronics to go to other relays mm -hmm. and target people. Right. Um, and it was only because an industry person who went up to check something thought, hello, what's this? But right. you, you can have something on a cell tower uh, that will tie in with the cell tower and it can go to, if, if yeah. I want to follow you it, it, going up it, this road, yeah. um, at the top of every lamppost is a photoelectric cell and some other gubbins, I don't know what's yeah. there. All I know is you have vans coming along that, that where people go up and they have a jiggle and they... So it, it, that's not difficult. Right, yeah. <clears throat> and yeah, it has happened. It's, it's, I've you, been involved you, in it. Your relay equipment <clears throat> isn't 360. It's, it is a, a more of a fine beam, but it's still... It's still I think but they are, can follow you. 
they can follow you. Right. They, they can absolutely track you. They can track you and then you, they can pass you to another one. That's, I, I, I've actually, there's an article when I give, I, I mention it in, it was published in Scientific American. And the reason they track you is because if you're on your cell phone and you're, you're talking, they have to track you mm -hmm. because they, they don't want to send your message everywhere because it wastes yeah. energy. Yeah. So they have to track you. Yeah. So that every single person, not only are you tracked, but they have voice recognition as well. Mm -hmm. So they, going back to the central computer, they know who you are, they know where you are, they have voice recognition, and if you have a camera, they, will, they can switch that on remotely as well. They can see you, they can see who you talk to, and I can tell you why this was alarming. I, I, I was invited to talk to bankers, investment bankers, and they all put their cell phones on the table as they started talking finance. <clears throat> and I said, do you realize that although your phones are off, they can be switched on remotely. Mm -hmm. They know exactly who owns what phone by your PI number. Mm -hmm. They know exactly, they know voice recognition. They can activate the camera if they want to. They know who is here and they can listen to every single thing you are saying. And if you're saying to me, big businesses won't do that to hear what other big businesses are talking about i will say well if they're not they're very naive and now big businesses when they have a meeting everybody's cell phones go into a safe mm -hmm. um, but you are tracked and it's in scientific american right. and i've even got the copy here yeah. you are tracked you can be listened to they know exactly where you are and they have now hundreds and thousands of mini devices everywhere that will do this linked up with computer. Yeah, but, you, but you, you wouldn't be able to put your finger on a specific base where all of this tracking is going on because it would be misuse of the technology, wouldn't it? It, it is misused and, and I was involved in a spy case very recently um, where it was misused. Um, the person, and to show the desperation of, of where they are here, the person who detected it um, committed suicide right. straight away. Right. Um, somebody else died, and this is why I was called in, right. because I knew the technology, and they said the person, he committed suicide and destroyed all his notes at the same time. Right. Right. Um, yeah. And they said, can you give evidence? And I said, you bet. Um, and. And, and this was exactly what you're saying. It was somebody going into, and if you think it's not been done, the CIA have done it. I know they've done it. Mm -hmm. um, and other secret agencies will also go in and they will divert fiber optic cables right. to get messages out with, with lenses, with um, prisms. Mm -hmm. uh, th there is a hell of a lot of skullduggery going on Right. Organized crime will do it. Uh, so, um, yes, it, it, it is going on. It has happened. It's been to court. And as long as you have uh, knowledge is information. And, uh, and I can tell you what it's used for. <clears throat> In terms of, and this goes back to my Cold War days. Um, during the Cold War, I was looking out for people who prominent people who could be blackmailed, by, namely by the KGB. <clears throat> this is why I, I was hunting them down for MI5, MI6. Now, and it is already in operation, you have organized crime tapping into people's phones and blackmailing them. Mm -hmm. Would you like this on the front page of your newspaper? you will give us. Mm -hmm. You have industries tapping into people. You have the secret services falling over themselves, tapping into everybody. Mm. 
the CIA have said Facebook is their biggest friend. Mm -hmm. And if you think your password can't be broken, it, it mm -hmm. can be tapped into by government services in a nanosecond. Yeah, yeah. Um, everybody is going into social media and um, and I say this, and it's, if I can just say one thing to the young people watching this. Now, I spent 11 years talking to spies, and I know how they work. <clears throat> and I say this at conferences, to young people especially, be careful what you put on your social media website. Your password, your password is irrelevant. If you type in, let's say you're 15, da -da 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 -da, I went to a party, uh, I smoked marijuana, da -da 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 -da, um, and I didn't like it, I was sick, and I won't do it again. Okay, that's now on your website. Da -da 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 -da, I'm dating this girl, we're both only 15, uh, but we had sex. Uh, I'm still with her, we're married now, we're happily married. Um, uh, and I'm, I'm glad that we, we started our relationship and, and it went where it did. <clears throat> Everything's forgotten. And this is how spies work. 20 years, 30 years is nothing to a spy. Nothing. They will come back to you 20 years, 30 years later. Hello, Mr. Smith. You won't know me. Um, you are now the CEO or the government minister or the head of a bank or whatever. I have your reference here for your job. You didn't actually say, because I have your other document here, Facebook, um, you didn't say that you had underage sex with a girl underage. That is illegal, underage sex. You didn't say that in your reference. You didn't say that you took drugs in your reference. Now, this can be made known and you can resign in disgrace and your children will come out of their private school. And I know this happens. Your children will come out of Eton or whatever and this and this and this and this and your wife will probably leave you and you will have to sell your big house. Or you can sign one document and we will leave you alone forever. And the document is usually a reference or a passport to verify an identity for somebody who is another spy to give them a status and a job. And now they are in the country, they have status, it will be a civil service job or some other job. They will work their way up. And this is how spies work. And they are already going into other countries' Facebooks and what have you, gathering this information, and it is sitting there. And it will sit there for 10, 20, 30 years, which is nothing. And I say to the students, do not put anything in there that you do not want people coming back to you with in 20 years time and saying now you're in trouble because you will be and this is how they work and you are handing it to them on a plate yeah and you're handing it to the rest of the world as well and the rest of the world and i can tell you now organized crime is on this and can i finish with one one example <clears throat> and i say this at conferences I say, all of you ladies, how would you like to write down on a piece of paper and hand it to me and I will publish it. I want the dates of your 28 day cycle and I will publish it on the internet. And they look at me like I was a pervert and, and ought to go on the sex offenders register. And I say, this is already done. And it is published in a science magazine. A person working for one of the big companies 
taps in, as they all do, they tap in to women. They tap in because during a 28-day cycle, a lot of women look for pharmaceutical products for various symptoms. They recognize this and they work out and plot your 28-day cycle. You ask for this every 28 days-ish. They log this and they then sell the information to advertisers. So that when your 28-day cycle is coming up to a particular week, you are then on your computer bombarded with advertisement products. It is sold. And money is a big earner in this sort of thing. And every medical condition, everything they can ad find to advertise, everything you say is sold. And I'm using this as one example. But it is already done. All the computer companies know your 28-day cycle because if they sell it for a penny a person, across the UK, they have 7 million pennies. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And if they sell it around the world, yeah. you are now a millionaire yeah. just for that. And yeah. this is what's happening. And people don't realise when they tap all this stuff in. Mm -hmm. All right, Barry. Well, it's been a fascinating listening to you. Really, really appreciate you, you spending your time. It's, it's my pleasure. That's all for this week. See you in a fortnight. Remember, believe none of what you hear and only half of what you see. I'm Richard D. Hall. Good night. This program was sponsored by Mouse Mesh. Problem, mouse in your home. Reaction. <coughs> Solution, Mouse Mesh. Air brick covers can also be glued into place without air brick adhesive.